language that was designed to be easier to learn. Uh, this isn't the first Ignite talk about it. Um, Giri Rao of India already did one, so I thought I'd focus on something different, some of the misconceptions about Esperanto, such as it was created in the 60s. Um, actually, that's a groovy thought, but <laughs> it's been around since 1887, uh, which makes it 125 years old next month. But nobody actually speaks Esperanto, do they? Really? Well, there's, there's no way to get an exact count, but the estimates of number of speakers worldwide today is as high as two million or more. Um, despite that, uh, people accuse Esperanto of having no culture, perhaps because it does not belong to a single people or country. Um, we don't have an Esperanto cuisine. That's a ridiculous thought. I have yet to see a dance that originated from the language, and our cinema is still rather meager. But there is a plethora of music out uh, this is just a small sampling of the albums that are available in uh, Latin, reggae, electronica, choral, rap, um, ballroom, all flavors of folk and rock, and really good music, too. <laughs> uh, some of the reading material that's out there, uh, magazines, some have been in, in publication for decades. Uh, there's literature, poetry, drama, novels, probably more of it than I will ever be able to read in my lifetime. Um, online, there's a thriving community. You can listen to podcasts, there are blogs, Twitter feeds, comic strips, and believe it or not, even the Esperanto equivalent of a Rickroll. <laughs> there is an Esperanto anthem which suffers from the opposite problem that the American anthem does. The melody doesn't really become an issue most of the time, but after about the first line or so, the words tend to taper off into mumbles. That's just a taste of the Esperanto culture. There's a lot more out there uh, to explore. Um, let's see. William Shatner uh, allegedly speaks Esperanto because of his leading role in the movie Incubus. All the dialogue was filmed in Esperanto, uh, but neither Shatner nor the other cast members could actually converse in the language. So I wouldn't suggest going up to him and speaking Esperanto. He's better known for his role in Star Trek. That's come up a few times tonight. Um, battling the Klingons. But Esperanto is not like Klingon. Klingon's a fascinating language, interesting story behind it too, but it does not have a lot in common with Esperanto. Klingon's creator here on the left uh, had to flesh out the language within the filming of a single movie, whereas the creator of Esperanto was able to spend a decade developing, revising, and testing Esperanto before going public with it. Um, Klingons and their culture uh, fictitious as they may be, was the basis of the Klingon language. Esperanto is the other way around. The language came first, and from that has grown the Esperanto culture of today. Klingon does have an alphabet. Uh, these funny characters on the left, I doubt most of you can pronounce those at a glance, and none of them are represented in Unicode. The entire Esperanto alphabet <laughs> is in Unicode, and you can make a fair guess as to how to pronounce most of those letters. Uh, the... Klingon language was created for the movies. That's its purpose. Esperanto was made as a means for international communication. It's a very different purpose. Klingon is a mouthful. It's hard to pronounce, and its <laughs> grammar is cumbersome even for most linguists. Esperanto, however, flows off the tongue, and its grammar is much, much simpler. Klingon is limited in its scope. It lacks words for concepts that are universally understood on Earth. The building blocks of Esperanto allow you to express the entire range of human expression, emotion, experience, and thought. Klingon actually only has about a dozen fluent speakers in the entire world. <laughs> and among them is not its creator, Mark Okrand. Esperanto has millions of people who can actually hold a conversation without just reciting from a phrase book. Esperanto is said to be easy. Um, I don't disagree with that, but I don't want to mislead you either. There's no button you can push to learn it instantly. You're not going to learn it overnight or in a week or in a month. But compared to national languages, it's considered much easier. It's five times easier than Spanish is for English speakers, but still gonna take study and practice, even if the amount of time and effort required is a fraction of what it could be. Really quickly, jumping back to Esperanto music that we mentioned earlier, um, who here would like to hear a song in Esperanto? Well, I invite you to the after party where I'd be more than happy to sing for you. 
My time is up up here. Thank you, Duncan. <laughs>